Okay, welcome back. We have here our challenging integral from MIT 2020. This was problem 13. We have the integral from zero to two pi of sine of sine x minus x dx. Okay, this looks pretty tricky. I wasn't sure if maybe I should do a u substitution first or if maybe I should just do some trig stuff. I think what I'd like to do is put off the u sub and let's do trig stuff first. And what I wanna do is use this angle difference formula for sine that we have here, noticing it's it's in exactly the right format of what we have here, just considering that our a value will be sine x and our b value will be this x, and we can just kind of pattern match. So putting this together for like our sine of a, we're gonna have sine, sine x, cosine of b will be just cosine x minus sine of x, and cosine of sine x dx. And then from here, this still doesn't look too easy, right? Um, we got a long expression. Now we can consider a u substitution for sine x, and I think that would work out pretty good, but I wanna do something different here. What I did was I made my u substitution u equals pi minus x. You may wanna know why would you do that? Well, I think if we do this substitution, it's gonna clean up our bounds nice, but then also it's gonna allow us to use the supplementary angle formula. So let's see how this is gonna work. From here, we'll just by rearranging this, we'll have x equals pi minus u. And taking a derivative, we're gonna have dx equals minus du. I'll make this substitution. So plugging two pi in here, we're gonna have a minus pi. Plugging zero in, we're gonna have pi. Then we're gonna have sine, sine pi minus u. So your expression is gonna get even longer now. Okay, so then we're gonna have cosine pi minus u. Then we're gonna have minus sine pi minus u cosine sine pi minus u. And then one thing I can't forget, we have a minus sign on this du, okay? What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave that off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this minus sign to flip our bounds here. Just remove that and bring a minus here, just to swap those. And then we need to clean this up. What we can do here is we'll use the supplementary angle formula. Let me just show what that is right now. Okay, pretty basic here. So the sign for our supplementary angle formula for sine, we're just gonna get back our sine. For cosine, we just need a negative in front. So then let me rewrite this and we'll just transform this whole thing. Okay, so this is looking better because we got rid of all of our complicated inputs and we just have everything in U. And then I think one other thing I can do, let's just, I just don't like this minus sign here. So we can bring this minus sign up front. And what I want to do now is break this into two integrals, right? Because we get this minus sign here, so we can just have another integral here. But let me clean that all up so it's just nicer to look at. Okay, so now that we have this separated into two integrals, I think we're pretty close to being able to finish this off. What we can do, because we have this symmetric bound this way, we can use on each of these, we're gonna use odd functions. And let me just show you how that's gonna work. Okay, so first we're gonna use this property right here of an integral. If we have an odd function f of x, and the bounds are in this, this setup of a minus a, so we're like the same distance from zero, then this whole integral is gonna be zero. And so what I'm proposing is we want to say, I want to say this whole integral is going to be zero, but what we have to do is we need to show that this is odd and this is odd. And for that, we have our definition over here of an odd function. It's just that it says if we use the negative input on x, we'll just get back negative of the whole function. And then we know that the function's odd. So then we'll do these one at a time. So starting with the left integral, I'm going to call this, I'm going to call the whole integral basically f of u, okay? And what we want to do is we want to look at f of negative u and see what happens. So just plugging in a negative u here, we're going to have sine, sine, negative u. Then we're going to have cosine, negative u. And just knowing, we know that sine is an odd function and we know cos cosine is an even function. So what's going to happen here is this negative can come out here. But then we're within sine again, so the negative is going to come out again. So rewriting this, we're going to have this, not, this negative all the way in front. And then again, with cosine being even, this is just gonna become a plus and we're gonna have cosine u. But what is this whole thing? This is actually just the same thing as minus our f of u, right? Because this whole thing right here is our f of u. So that means this function right here is odd and this whole integral is going to zero. Next, we're gonna look at this second integral. We'll call the whole thing, we'll call this thing gu, okay? And we'll do the exact same thing. We just wanna look at what happens when our input is gonna be negative u. Well, here we're gonna have sine minus u, cosine sine minus u. Again, sine's an odd function, so this minus we can bring out front here. 
This one we can bring out front, but because it's inside of a cosine, because this is inside of a cosine, it's gonna become a plus though. So then when we rewrite this, we're gonna have this minus in front, minus sine u, and then on this one, we're gonna have just cosine sine of u, again, because the even function is gonna eat up that negative. But again, this whole thing's just gonna be minus g of u, noticing that this is the same thing as this right here. So again, this is odd and going to zero. So in the end, we got minus zero, minus zero equals zero. Okay, that's it. After a whole bunch of work, we just found out the answer was zero. So I think the lesson for next time is maybe just guess zero in the beginning and save yourself all those steps. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day.